Jojo and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to do a uh, unboxing. Uh, I got right here uh, some video games, some JRPG games uh, that I ordered from eBay uh, a few days back. I haven't really gotten the chance to, uh, to open this box up until now. Let's look at a few boxes over there. And uh, this is from Mullet Valentin, it's from France. The story behind this, uh, behind these games. Um, so Mr. Valentin uh, was pretty much auctioning uh, all of these JRPG uh, games on his uh, eBay store. And, and I happened to, uh, I, was, I was looking for uh, a game called Wild Arms 4 and his offer was the cheapest one. It was, I think it was, uh, it went for less than five pounds. I think uh, when it, when, it, when the bidding first started, so I took a shot and fortunately I won that. And upon looking uh, some other games on his selection, I found a few more of them, and and all of them are uh, up for bidding as well. And yep, and I won all of them. And fortunately enough, uh, Mr. Valentine was able to uh, ship me all of these games in a, in a single box. So save me a lot of dollars um, for the shipping. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Mr. Valentine is called Hunter Collection uh, Four Five Six Three Two at eBay. And yeah, so let's get to it. I don't want to accidentally mess up the games while we're doing this. Some of you guys who don't know, I'm currently based here in Australia and it's really hard to find um, some good uh, retro uh, video games around here, especially PS2. PS2, PS1. Well, you can pretty much find everything in eBay, but still, it's not like there's a uh, like a video game store, uh, a video game store that sells retro video games. Uh, there is EB Games and JP Hi-Fi, but they pretty much sell uh, PS4. EB Games pretty much sell uh, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 video games, but here in Australia, all of the formats are in. PAL, PAL. And I have nothing against PAL, but I prefer my games in NTSC, US. Oh, what do we have here? Okay. Um, the invoice from France. Oh, um, look at that. A note here. It says, thanks for your order. Do not hesitate to leave feedback. Smile the face. Valentine. Right there. Well, Mr. Valentine, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank you for, for all of these games as well. I'll be sure to leave a good positive feedback on your uh, eBay store later. Okay, uh, look at this. So I got five. PS2 games here from Mr. Uh, Hunter Collector, Mr. Valentin. Uh, there it is. The reason I, uh, I got this box in the first place. So I got, first up, Wild Arms 4. So Wild Arms 4 is part of the Wild Arms main title series for the PS2. The first one came in, uh, the, the first Wild Arms game was released uh, in 1996, 98, and 96, 97, around that time, uh, during the uh, during the first launch of the first PlayStation and uh, the PlayStation, uh, so the PlayStation One got Wild Arms One and Wild Arms Two, and the PlayStation Two got Wild Arms Three, Four, and Five. There, uh, I think there is a Wild Arms game uh, was released for the PSP as well. I haven't got that yet. So, let's 
stop this. It's what I'm for. Over and this right here. Back. Uh, justice never will fall. You are the last hope for a devastating world. This uh, latest chapter in the Wild Arm series features on all the cast characters with realistic facial expressions and voices. That indeed it was. So I had that game before. I was able to play Wild Arms before uh, back then. I was able to finish it. I only finished it once. And then after that, I moved to Wild Arms 5. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, look at there. Uh, let's see. I uh, got the cover art here, the manual. Very pristine, have uh, pages. Got the video game settings here. And the uh, cast and characters right there. Very nice. Pretty much detailing uh, what's everything that you need to know about this game. Ah, okay, now I remember. Um, so, for Wild Arms 1, 2, and 3, it's pretty much a turn-based game RPG. Uh, for the Wild Arms 4, uh, they were trying to be cutting edge uh, in terms of their battle system. They were trying to be different. I think they introduced the hexagon system, where you can pretty much, uh, from it's still pretty much turn-based, but uh, you move your characters in the uh, six hexagon spheres. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, seven. There's one in the middle. So seven hexagon spheres. And you move your characters throughout those, each of those hexagon spheres. And each hexagon sphere has an area of effect if you're using magic or a special, or a special attack. So yeah. Uh, if there's one thing that I can remember about this game, it's still pretty much a, a, a you run in the middle uh, turn based RPG. Your, your disc right there, and at the back, very clean, very pristine looking. Ah, look at here, I knew I uh, forgot something. Since here, look at the back, it says, Fate of the New World is in your hands, Shadow Hearts from the New World, from Exodus. Uh, I think I remember this. Um, the cover art is a bit less enticing, so maybe when I first saw this, I was like, eh, what is this? Turns out that it was a JRPG in Exceed. Uh, at the time, I should have known better if it's made by Exceed, then it should be good. I mean, apart from Square Enix and Namco Bandai. Exceed for a video game publishing company. Quite decent. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, apparently, one of your uh, party members is apparently works for the secret organization that you guys are fighting. So, it's a good plot twist during the middle of the game. I was like, ah! oh my god! Is the enemy? Oh, that person is the enemy. I didn't realize. Okay, set this aside. And next up is your uh, Persona 3. Persona 3 F. Uh, Persona F E S. It's Shin Megami Tensei. Now, in regards with this game, Truth to be told, I am playing this uh, with my uh, PlayStation 3. My PlayStation 3 is backwards compatible uh, with the PS, the PlayStation, with the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 2 games, not the soft emulation one. The first, uh, the first series, you know, the one with the hardware emulation. So, but, uh, the, unfortunately, I also, I also got that in me. But unfortunately, it was. Uh, the Asian format, so apparently Asian games can only work on that. I had a custom firmware to sorry, just so I can play the video games. And I downloaded the game again, I'm sorry, but 
hey, I own the game now, so you know, you can't sue me. Oh. I'm on the verge of completing the game. I mean, I'm already in the middle of it, but uh, here in Australia, uh, at the time of making this video, it's almost about 16 degrees. Uh, so it's really, really cold out here in the living room. So, I'm not, so I was thinking maybe after winter, somehow the winter here is over, then I can resume playing Persona 3. But anyway, let's start with the cover manual. With the manual. Okay. So this one's I uh, this one's good. I see. Uh, mostly green. Now, to my understanding. When Atlas uh, were conceptualizing about the Persona games 3, 4, and 5 uh, in particular, um, they wanted it to be uh, color centric. Persona 3 is blue, which you will see. I don't know why the, the manual is blue, but there are hints of blue there. Persona 4 uh, is yellow. I've already finished that game as well on my PS. downloaded game but I have the game so I'll show it to you next time don't you worry and Persona 5 for the PlayStation 4 uh, is in red finish that game as well it's, it's very good and I'll revert back nothing uh, nothing in particular to be discussed it's just your video game characters your disc right here. Right there. It says here Gecko Khan High School. Shin Megami Tensei person at the FES. It's right there. Okay, next up. Ooh. We got the trifecta here. You got uh, the hack games for the PlayStation 2. So I got dot hack infection. Part one. Dot hack uh, mutation. Part two. Dot hack outbreak. Part three. Now, truth to be told, I haven't really played these games before, and as much as possible, I don't want to discuss video games that I haven't really played because you know the dot hack series pretty much um, tells a story of uh, an MMO. RPG, a massive online role-playing game called The World. So I can only go with what I know about the show that I'm projecting towards this game. So anyway, don't get me wrong, I, I do know some of these characters from the anime show. So, art, looks good. See right there. If you can tell, right there it's called the world. So opening uh, opening cutscenes uh, explained here at the bottom. If my memory serves me right, uh, your uh, the main protagonist is called Kite. Kite, like you know, flying kite. So I'm guessing this is a uh, a three-party battle system turn-based, of course. Now, one of the main reasons I didn't bought this uh, about the Dot Hack series uh, is because apparently I was led to believe that you need uh, you need an internet modem to play the Dot Hack series because you know it says an MMORPG, and I'm like I was a stupid kid back then. I thought, oh. I need an internet connection to play these games, then pass. Hard pass. There did I know that it was just your typical JRPG turn base that has a an online in-game motif but doesn't really need uh, an internet connection to play it. Like some of the MMORPGs that you have right now, like Final Fantasy. Uh, uh, just like before, Final Fantasy XI came out along with these games, so and that was online. So 
and I thought, yeah, that hack series uh, were online games as well, so I didn't really pay much attention to it. Okay, at the back. So, this lady right here, I don't know if you can see, that is Subaru, if I'm correct. And uh, it's pretty much advertising part two, that hack mutation, the second installment. Well, would you look at that? So it says right here, that hack liminality volume one in the case of in the case of my Minase. Please refer to the owner's manual on how to play a DVD on your PlayStation 2. English subtitles are a translation of the Japanese audio track. It may differ from English audio track at certain points. Ooh. Okay. Oh, see right here? I'm not lying. Dot hack sign. See, see, see right there? It says dot hack sign. Complete DVD. I think the the main character was named Tsukasa in the dot hack anime series. So I got dot hack liminality. See right there. Here, one. Back looks okay, looks clean. Huh. Were they thinking to making so? Were they thinking of making all of these games as a continuous one, like one, two, three, like part one, part two, part three, like Lord of the Rings back then? Okay, next up is that hack mutation part two. See right there. Let's leave it up. See at the back. Now, I'm not sure on who is this lady here. I, if I remember correctly, it's, I think her name's Diva. Is it Diva? So, okay. So we got um, Subaru and Kite right here. And it's a green cover. So yeah, uh, it's pretty much a continuation of the first game. See right there, you got Subaru at the dollar bill. Uh, when you look at that, what I would like to know is if if you have a save game from the first game uh, from the previous game, uh, would that save game data would be carried out on the second game? Maybe there will be freebies if you do. I'm not sure. Um, the only game that I know, uh, the only game that I know that came in a trilogy like this one would be Seno Saga. Uh, Seno Saga, uh, I got, the, I got three, I got three Seno Saga, one, two, and three. It's right there. I can show them to you if you like. I haven't played the second and third one. I already, fin I already finished the first one. Quite a unique game, if I should say so myself. It's no Seno Gears, but hey, ooh, it says right here, Inuyasha. Uh -huh. Inuyasha, available on the PlayStation game console. Wait, Inuyasha. I think Inuy uh, Inuyasha from the PlayStation 1 is uh, one of those uh, games during the last installment of uh, the PlayStation 1 years. Okay, so you got your dot hack mutation part two disc, it's right here. Got Subaru in front. Game goods. Back of the game looks nice. And your dot hack liminality part two. I'm guessing a uh, continuation of the first Luminality DVD disc that you have from the previous game. So we got the last one that we have is Dot Hack Outbreak Part 3. And according here, it, ha it also includes the anime DVD as well. Hmm. I'm guessing. The last installment of the Liminality series. See at the 
back. I can't remember the character, uh, this particular character. I wanna say Sora. I don't know. So which way now? It says right here at the back. Uh, Outbreak continues Bandai's tradition of providing one of the best online RPGs available and doesn't even use a modem. Like we mentioned, I didn't, I didn't bought the games before because I thought they were online games. You need an internet connection for it. You see right here, cover art. Uh, it's not Kite. It looks like Tsukasa from the Dot Hack series. I wonder what happened. It's in pink. Everything's in pink. Is it pink? It looks like purple. Purple pink. Not that I have any problems with pink. I like pink. I wear pink. I think pink is manly. Very manly indeed. Anyway, so you got uh, Kite and Subaru. So good to know that they haven't really left the series. Uh, in this. Oh, see that. See this? Look at this. Dot hack. One, two, three, and four. There's a fourth game. I didn't know that. Dot hack quarantine part four. So it's not a trilogy. There's four? Oh no. That means I need to go back to eBay and look for the fourth game. I wonder if I can find a brand new one. I don't mind buying a, a used game, but all of these are new. It makes sense to buy a brand new game just to complete the set. Oh, well, anyway, that's a bummer. Uh, huh? Uh, still says pretty much the same thing from what the previous game. Uh, from the previous games, uh, same game mechanics, I'm guessing. Uh, st you still have the three party, uh, three, uh, three team party for each battle. Not this one. This one. Uh, uh, this guy. Uh, it says right here. I think his name is Balong. B A L U N G. Balong. Where did I get Sora? Balan uh, is a video game. Uh, is the video game character in the series who has the wings? I think he's the only one with wings. See right there. Um, this character here. Uh, I think his name is Bear. 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 Like uh, grizzly bear, polar bear, brown bear. If you're gonna look at him, he looks like a bear. You know. You know. If you know what I mean, you know, like a bear, bear. I think bear is a gay lingo for big hairy guy, a big hairy gay guy. I feel like I need to explain that reference. So you got your dot hack liminality, third disc, right there, it says to read. And there's a girl, and there's a silhouette of a girl there, I'm not sure who it is. And uh, yep, and there is this um, cat slash rabbit hybrid character. I'm not sure it is as well. And that concludes all of them. So once again, I um, I would like to get, I would like to thank Mr. Valentin for for all of these games. I didn't know there was a th uh, there was a fourth game. I mean, it would have been great if he ha uh, if you had the fourth game. I would have bought it as well from you. Anyway. So, so that's it for now. Um, to, to, to some of you who are new to this channel, um, leave a thumb, thumbs up, a like, a link, and please do subscribe to help this channel. Very much appreciate it if you do. I would like for you to join me once again for another for another unboxing. Uh, there are still a few items over there at the back that I still haven't opened yet. So yeah. And that's it. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.